Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alicia and today I'm going to pretend I'm qualified to talk about nonfiction and give you some tips that I have found that work really well for me to read more nonfiction, also give some recommendations and kind of like a where to start for nonfiction. I'm doing this because Nonfiction November is coming up and nonfiction is something I've really been getting into recently and it's something that before I found the system that really worked for me, I enjoyed it but always had a hard time getting around to and I wanted to create a video for people who might be in a similar situation who want to read more and are not quite sure how to do that. I'm going to share what I do and you can try it out and if it works for you, that's awesome. If not, that's great too. So there are two basic overarching steps or sections I'm going to talk about. The first one being finding what you're interested in and then finding a good system. So to start with finding what you're interested in, this is like the books you want to read. What subject are you interested in? There are a lot of different ways you can hear about different nonfiction books. One of the ways that I am finding the most helpful right now is when I read a book that references another book, if I'm enjoying the first book I'm reading, chances are I'm going to want to read the second one because if the author of the first one is referencing the other book, that probably means that other book is really good. So an example of this is Self-Compassion, The Proven Power to Being Kind to Yourself by Kristen Neff, PhD. This is a book that I picked up because I read about it in another book. Now, this book was not as good as the other book, but there was still some very helpful information in this book. So the first place, if you are already reading nonfiction and you're wanting to read more, fairly easy tip, take note of the books that are being referenced in the nonfiction books you like to find more nonfiction books you might like. This can also apply to podcasts you might be listening to about a certain topic. Let's talk about true crime for one hot second. True crime podcasts are hugely popular. Occasionally, a book about true crime might be mentioned on a true crime podcast. And again, this feels fairly obvious. I'm still going to include it, even though it seems pretty obvious. But if you will like that true crime podcast and they mention a book, maybe check out that book they're mentioning. Another great way I have been finding more nonfiction books to read are just seeing the people I enjoy, the celebrities I like, and just reading their memoirs and then reading the memoirs of people like them, even if I'm not really into that person, maybe I'll enjoy their memoir. I've actually read a few memoirs recently where I didn't know who the person was before I read the memoir, but I really enjoyed their memoir. A really great example of this is Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford. I heard about this because she was featured in one of John Green's videos on the Vlogbrothers. John Green is someone I'm interested in. I recently read his nonfiction book and he referenced Ashley C. Ford. I'd never heard of her before, but loved Somebody's Daughter. It was a very, very good memoir. So again, this kind of ties in to the one before, but just paying attention and taking a chance on a memoir, even if you don't know who the person is. Next is just picking up nonfiction books wherever you hear about them that sound interesting to you. This is something that I don't know if anyone else is like this, but I used to not do this. I would hear about nonfiction books that sound interesting and be like, yeah, okay, whatever. I'm not going to pick it up because of whatever reason. And I feel like nonfiction, at least to me, again, I don't know if anyone else has had this experience, but nonfiction felt so unobtainable that even if I would hear about nonfiction books that sounded interesting, I would not pick them up because I didn't think I would enjoy them. That ties more into what I'm going to talk about later and how I've really developed a love for nonfiction and how I really found what works for me for reading nonfiction. But if you're in a similar situation, 
where you're hearing about nonfiction books that sound interesting and maybe you're not picking them up because they feel out of reach. It feels like too much work. You feel like you're not going to enjoy it. Don't worry. Pick up the nonfiction book that sounds interesting and then find your system for reading nonfiction that works for you. The last thing I'm going to mention under finding nonfiction books is honestly the one that is maybe what I would argue to be the most important in this category, which is finding books from different perspectives other than your own. So a great example of this that I read this year is A Year Without a Name by Cyrus Grace Dunham. This is a memoir by, again, someone who's like semi-famous, famous adjacent. I'd never heard of this person before. I had no idea who they were. But this is a memoir about being trans and going through a transition and all of the things around that, which is something as a cis woman I've never done and will never do. So I picked this up because I wanted a different perspective than what I have. And there are people who have very kindly and generously done very hard emotional labor to write memoirs to help us who do not have to go through their situations understand a little bit more about what they went through. So I would argue that maybe even the most important way of finding nonfiction books to read, specifically memoirs in this case, is trying to learn about perspectives other than your own. And you can do this through things that aren't memoirs. I just think memoirs are normally the way that it's easiest to learn about different perspectives. Now that you've found a nonfiction book that you are interested in reading, here's the fun part, at least what I think is the fun part, which is finding your system of reading your nonfiction book. Back in the day, I just used to sit down and read nonfiction like it was a story. And that works for some people. And it works for some nonfiction, like memoirs that's great for because it is more like a story. But for some books that didn't work very well for. So I had to find a system that really worked for me. The first part I would think of finding a system that works for you is finding a format you love. And this can actually vary based on type of nonfiction. So for memoirs, I love to listen to memoirs as an audiobook form, especially because a lot of memoirs are narrated by the author. An example of a memoir that I've absolutely loved recently that is not one previously mentioned is A Promised Land by Barack Obama. This book is also narrated by President Obama and I love just hearing an author tell their story in their voice and especially a voice like President Obama's which I grew to know so well over the course of him being the president of the United States. The next tip I have for finding a system of reading that works for you is remembering that speed does not matter. And this is the case for all books. You read at your own pace. It doesn't matter how fast you go. But I used to think reading nonfiction, even when I was enjoying it, it was almost like, okay, I have to get through this so I can move on to reading the stuff I really want to. With my new system, I've slowed down my nonfiction reading immensely, but I'm enjoying it more. I'm retaining more information and it doesn't feel like a chore that needs to be done anymore. A great example of this is Stamped from the Beginning by Ibram X. Kendi. This book took me four months to read, I think. It is a pretty chunky book. And as you can see, I have tabs because I annotated it. Excluding the notes and chapters, this book comes in at just over 500 pages. This is a length of book that if I was reading a fiction story, and it took me four months to read a 500 page fiction novel, I would be unhappy that it took me that long. But a book like this, 
because I took my time with it and I annotated it, which I'll get to in a second, I'm not necessarily unhappy that it took me that long. I would have liked to get through it maybe a little bit faster, but again, I don't think it's the speed that matters. I'm reading this to learn the things that my education in school did not teach me. I would rather read slowly and understand and retain more information than just read a book to check it off the list. So there might be some nonfiction books that take you a while to get through and that's okay. I'm actually glad it took me so long to get through this book because it meant I was paying attention when I read and that has become very important because ever since I finished reading this book I've been able to reference it when discussing racism with my family or my friends because I took my time with it and didn't try to rush through it and I remember things that it said I can go back through my tabs and find certain points to aid in those conversations. And the last stuff I want to talk about is annotating. As you can see on this copy of st Stamped from the Beginning, I have a lot of tabs. And those are on places that I annotated. Most of my annotations are just highlighting. There are occasions where I have written in my books, normally with pencil, but mostly I just tab. You can see I did it with stamped from the beginning. You can see I did it with self-compassion. You can see I did it with the vagina Bible. And you can see I'm currently doing it with 400 souls. I think annotating can be very helpful for your understanding and your enjoyment of reading nonfiction because it can help you retain information. It can help you understand what's going on better. And that has been a barrier for me in the past from enjoying nonfiction and from picking it up. I honestly don't think I would have understood everything in Stamped from the beginning if I did not annotate because this is a history book. History is not really my best subject. I've never been very good at history and history has always been hard for me to follow. And honestly, books like this are a little bit dense. Annotating this book, highlighting things that stood out to me really helped me understand what was happening and keep a thread of what was happening, even though history is my worst subject. Annotating can take any form you want it to. It can be just highlighting, which is mostly what I do. Most of what it is is just highlighting, but you can also write in your books. You can also keep a separate notebook to take notes on what you're reading whatever works for you. I think actually the most important tip I have for reading nonfiction is picking a number of pages or a number of chapters or a number of sections you are going to read per day. For me, this really helps me not feel like the nonfiction book is turning into a chore. And even though this means it can take longer to get through than if you were just sitting down and reading it like a story, I really think breaking the book up into chunks makes it not only feel more manageable, but also makes it feel less like reading for school, at least to me. And that is what I'm doing with 400 Souls. This is the nonfiction book I'm currently in the middle of. I always have a nonfiction book that I'm reading on the side of everything else I'm reading. It does not become the only book I'm reading. And that is another way that really helps me not feel like I have to race through it. I have to not enjoy it because I just need to finish it. So for 400 souls, I'm reading two to three stories a day. That does mean this book will take me a really long time to get through, but it means that I will actually also take the time to really sit with this book and think about it and learn from it and enjoy it. And those are all of the tips I have for you today. I hope you found something that might be helpful for you that you would like to try to implement in your nonfiction reading. Before I wrap up this video, I do have a few more recommendations. The first one being Stiff by Mary Roach. This is basically just what happens to dead bodies. It talks about bodies that were donated to science. It talks about, I think he even talks about organ donation and just a lot of different stuff in here. So if you are interested in 
what happens to bodies after people are, have died, Stiff would be a good book for you. Next is The Vagina Bible, The Vulva and the Vagina, Separating the Myth from the Medicine. This is a book about health and medicine and is a book I would recommend to anyone who has a vagina or spends a lot of time with someone who does or is maybe raising someone who does. Next is Over the Top, A Raw Journey to Self-Love by Jonathan Van Ness. This is, of course, Jonathan Van Ness's memoir and it is wonderful. And if you love Queer Eye as much as I do and you love Jonathan Van Ness and the Fab, Fab Five as much as I do, this is a no-brainer to read. And lastly is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. This is definitely not a nonfiction book I would recommend for everyone. This is a very dark, true crime nonfiction book about the Golden State Killer. So this is a book I would only recommend if you are very into true crime and can handle some pretty dark stuff. And that is everything for today. Let me know down in the comments if you like to read nonfiction, if you have any tips for me for reading nonfiction to make it more enjoyable, to make it so I can read more of it, anything like that. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to and I will see you in my next video. Bye!